Dear students, welcome to my channel, Learn to Live. In this video series, we will be learning the 8th Standard Science, chapter by chapter, based on NCERT syllabus. So let's get started with today's chapter. Chapter 1 Crop Production and Management We all know that we need food to live. Production of these foods from plants is called crop production. This chapter is based on crop production and storage. In this chapter, we will be learning the following topics. Crop and crop production. Types of crops. Practices of crop production. Types of agricultural practices. Animal husbandry. Finally, there will be questions and answer session to revise what we learned from this chapter. At first, let us learn what is a crop. When plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at the same place on a large scale, it is called a crop. For example, the crop of tomato means that all the plants grown in that place are that of tomato. In India, we have a lot of crops produced. Another example of a crop is, wheat produced in one place in large scale, as in the picture. Classification of crops there are a lot of crops produced in India. Vegetables, cereals, and fruits are the types of crops. Due to the vast size of India and varying seasons, different crops are sown in different parts of the country. Based on seasons, crops are classified into Karif crops and Rabi crops. Karif crops. The crops which are sown in the rainy season are called Karif crops. In India, the rainy season is from June to September. Soybean, groundnut, and maize are some Karif crops. Rabi crops. The crops which are sown in the winter season are called Rabi crops. In India, winter is from October to March. Mustard, gram, and wheat are some Rabi crops. Basic Practices of Crop Production Production of crops is called the cultivation of crops. Basic practices of crop production are also known as agricultural practices. Agricultural practices. The cultivation of crops includes several activities undertaken by farmers over a period of time. These activities are called agricultural practices. Below listed are the agricultural practices. Preparation of soil. Sowing. Adding manure and fertilizers. Irrigation. Protection from weeds. Harvesting. Storage. Let's learn about all these agricultural practices one by one. Preparation of soil. This is the first and one of the most important steps in the cultivation of crops, as it turns and loosens the soil. Let us understand why it is important. It allows the roots to penetrate deep inside the soil, and breathe easily. It allows the growth of earthworms and microbes present in the soil. These organisms will further turn and loosen soil, and add humus to it. The dead plants and animals are decomposed by soil organisms. This decomposed matter contains a lot of nutrients and minerals. Turning and loosening of soil bring the nutrient-rich soil to the top so that the plants can use it. Tilling or plowing. The process of loosening and turning of soil is called tilling or plowing. It is necessary to break the crumbs in the plowed field. The field is leveled using a leveler for sowing and irrigation purposes. Sometimes manure is added to the soil before plowing for proper mixing of manure with soil. The field is then watered before sowing. Agricultural implements. The main tools used for plowing are called agricultural implements. Plow. It is used for plowing, adding fertilizers, removal of weeds, scraping of soil, etc. It is made of wood and drawn by a pair of bulls or other animals. It contains a strong triangular iron strip called plowshare. It is attached to one end of a long log of wood called plow shaft. The other end of plow shaft is attached to a beam placed on bull's neck. Ho. It is used for removing weeds and loosening the soil. 
It has a strong, broad, and bent plate of iron fixed to one of the ends of a long rod of iron or wood. It is pulled by animals in the field. Cultivator Nowadays farmers are using tractor-driven cultivators for plowing. Its usage reduces time and cost for labor. Sowing Planting the seeds for crop production is called sowing. It is the most important part of crop production. Seed selection Good quality seeds, which are clean and healthy are selected by the farmers before sowing, in order to get a high yield. One method of seed selection is putting the seeds in a vessel filled with water. After some time, those seeds which are floating are damaged seeds. It is floating because it became hollow and thus lighter. There are some tools used by farmers for sowing. The tools used for sowing are Traditional tool used for sowing is shaped like a funnel, with two or three pipes with sharp ends attached to its bottom. Once we put the seeds in the funnel, it goes through these pipes and gets planted in the soil as these pipes pierce into the soil. These days seed drill is used with the help of tractors for sowing. It sows the seeds uniformly at proper distance and depth to avoid overcrowding, and covers the seeds with soil after sowing, to prevent the seeds from getting eaten by birds. Adding manure and fertilizers those substances which are added to soil as nutrients, for the healthy growth of plants are called manure and fertilizers. Manure are the organic substances, obtained from the decomposition of plant or animal wastes. Plant and animal wastes are dumped by farmers, into an open pit for decomposition. Microorganisms present in the pit decompose these wastes. These decomposed matter is organic manure. Fertilizers are chemical substances produced in factories, that are rich in a particular nutrient. Example, ammonium sulfate, urea, and NPK. Why adding manure is important? Growing crops continuously in a place make the soil poor in nutrients. Adding manure will replenish the soil with nutrients. This process is called manuring. Excessive use of fertilizers will make the soil less fertile. Manuring will increase the fertility of the soil. Manuring improves soil texture. Manuring improves the water retaining capacity of the soil. Use of fertilizers. By using fertilizers, we can get a better yield of crops. Disadvantages of fertilizers. Excessive use of fertilizers makes the soil less fertile. Excessive use of fertilizers reduces the water retaining capacity of the soil. Please check the below table to understand the difference between manure and fertilizers. Pause the video to read the table completely. Advantages of manure over fertilizers It improves water holding capacity, soil texture, and the number of friendly microbes in the soil. It makes the soil porous and makes the gases exchange easier. Crop rotation. This is another method of replenishing the soil with nutrients. In this method, different crops are grown alternately. Farmers in North India grow legumes in one season, and wheat in next season. This helps in replenishing the soil with nitrogen. The rhizobium bacteria, present in the nodules of roots of leguminous plants fix atmospheric nitrogen. Irrigation. The supply of water to plants at certain intervals is called irrigation. These intervals vary from crop to crop, soil to soil, and season to season. Below list are the irrigation sources. Wells and tube wells. Ponds, lakes, and rivers. Dams and canals. Irrigation methods are classified into two, as Traditional methods of irrigation. Modern methods of irrigation Traditional methods of irrigation From wells, canals, or lakes, water is lifted and taken to fields using cattle or human labor. Traditional ways of irrigation are Moat, Chain Pump, Dhekli, Rahat. These methods are considered as cheaper but less effective.
Water pumps are generally used for lifting water for this way. These pumps run with electricity, diesel, solar energy or biogas. Modern methods of irrigation. These methods are more effective as it uses water economically. Sprinkler system. In this system, perpendicular pipes with rotating nozzles are connected to the main water pipe. With the help of a pump, water will be allowed to flow under pressure, escapes the nozzles, and sprinkled over the crops as it is like raining. It is very useful in sandy soil and uneven lands. Drip system. In this system, water falls directly at the root position, drop by drop. This system is very effective, and water is not wasted at all. This method can be implemented where water availability is poor. It is considered as the best technique for the irrigation of gardens, trees, and fruit plants. Protection from weeds The undesirable plants naturally growing in a field along with the crops are called weeds. The process of removal of weeds is called weeding. Why weeding is necessary? It is necessary, because the weeds will compete with the crops for nutrients, water, space, and light, affecting the crop growth. It will be difficult for harvesting if there are weeds, as it will mix with the crops. Some weeds are poisonous for animals and humans. So weeding is necessary. What are we decides? How it is used? Chemicals that are used to control weeds are called weedicides. Weedicides won't damage the crops. So, it is sprayed all along the crops, but will only kill the weeds. Depending on the requirement, weedicides are diluted with water and sprayed in the fields using a sprayer. These must be sprayed before flowering and seed formation of weed. While spraying the weedicides, it is important that the person must cover the nose and mouth to avoid the chemicals present in weedicides to affect the person's health. Harvesting Cutting of crops after it becomes matured is called harvesting. How it is done? The crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground. In our country, harvesting is done either manually or by machine. Threshing from the harvested crops, grains must be separated from the chaff. This process is called threshing. This can be done with the help of following. Combine. It is a machine used for threshing. In fact, it is a combined harvester and thresher. Winnowing. Those farmers with small holdings of land, or doesn't have a combine machine, are using this machine for threshing. Storage. If we need to keep the grains for a longer time, we need to store the harvested crops in proper storage, to protect it from moisture, insects, rats, and microorganisms. Before storing, the harvested grains need to be dried properly in the sunlight, to reduce the moisture in them, or else they may get spoiled, or attacked by organisms, losing their germination capacity. Drying the grains prevents the attack by fungi, bacteria, insects, and pests. Small farmers store the grains in metallic bins or jute bags. In large-scale storage, grains are stored in silos and granaries to protect it from pests like insects and rats. While storing food grains at home, dried neem leaves are used. Specific chemical treatments are required to protect them from pests and microorganisms for storing large quantities of grains in big go-downs. Animal Husbandry The process of crop production involves several steps like selection of seeds, sowing, etc. Likewise, animals reared at home or in farms must be provided with proper food, shelter, and care to get dairy product outputs from them. When this is done on a large scale, it is called animal husbandry. It is through the practice of animal husbandry that we are getting dairy like milk, yogurt, cheese, and butter, egg, meat. Now let us discuss some questions and answers. Section 1. Fill in the blanks. For each question, 
Try to answer in 5 seconds. If you need more time, pause the video. Section 2. Give two examples of each. For each question, try to answer in 5 seconds. If you need more time, pause the video. Section 3. Match items in column A with those in column B. Section 4. Write a paragraph in your own words on each of the following. Explain how fertilizers are different from manure. If wheat is sown in the Karif season, what would happen? Discuss. What is irrigation? Describe two methods of irrigation which conserve water. Explain how soil gets affected by the continuous plantation of crops in a field. What are weeds? How can we control them?